Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 135. We've done this 135 times, and I still can't feel my legs. Joining me this week is the one and only Ian Gibson. I will say the nice thing about the numbers is because we do it weekly, that means I know that we're coming up on our three year of local chat. What a ride it's been. So happy it's ending. Final episode, folks. Thanks Final for joining Final episode. And yeah, you're for it. And all his Oh, what glory. a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted Stu, but we got David instead. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, David first shoot me with the don't talk and then (laughs) 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 sorry I was just like about to hit it and I was afraid it was gonna unmute voice chat not that it in the grand scheme of things it really matters but I had I was like oh a lull and then you started talking and I was like no um I will say when I reached out to get a guest last minute um uh, you did say, what was it? I can unless someone else really wants to. And I almost replied, David, no one else really wants to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know, Zach was in there and like, just like a few weeks ago, he was like, oh yeah, I'd really like to join. And like, we're not, there's no safety of content today. So like, technically everyone is theoretically free. Oh, bastards. Oh, is um, it like an anniversary for you guys or something? Because you guys are streaming like every day. It Who died. is an anniversary, actually, <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, I think this, this week is like, like the five year, technically. You guys are like three weeks too early for 9-11, though. <laughs> <laughs> and way you, past 7 You were literally just summarizing a Slack conversation we had earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Not with you, That's like fun. with, it, with the same people. <laughs> But so okay, wait. It's your it's it's Save Data's anniversary. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I think it's. Let me point. Let me point it. So I think it's I, like five I, years for the channel. I've lost track of our years, but Sunday the twentieth is our anniversary for Subpixel. Oh, nice. But back, back when our channel was created, we were known as Around the Monitor. <laughs> <laughs> A game show or a game news show, not so loosely based on ESPN's Around the Horn. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Spor- I, sports and gamers, the two things that go. It feels so crazy. No, to the say funniest this. thing, the funniest thing, there were so many people that rotated into that show. Mm-hmm. I think I'm the only other one that had seen that, <laughs> that <laughs> show on ESPN at any point. And that was when I was a kid and that it was on when no cartoons were yeah. on. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. I knew what Around the Monitor was before I knew what Around the Horn was. <laughs> I, I knew it only because I'd watched it like three times in a row once when I got stuck in some waiting room for like three hours. And it was just like it. some marathon they Probably. were playing of it. They played it yeah. a lot back in the days and i don't know why because it wasn't that good nightmare scenario yes pn man no wonder they're losing money (laughs) Uh, i always like that sign that the guy i forget where he held it up but it was espn but it just said penis every single time with the espn logo letters and he would hold it up like behind (laughs) espn broadcasts oh yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) this is very clever uh, which I'm thinking of it now. Are the ESPN letters the same as the Blade Runner logo? It's no. Like... No, but Avatar is Papyrus. Oh, God. that <laughs> One of the best SNL skits ever created. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. Uh, folks, we're here to talk about video games and all sorts of things. But before we do that, we got to hit the chit chat section where we chit and chat about things. Uh, this week arrived on my doorstep from Poland. No, Poland, the Netherlands. It was. I kept Those thinking, are very different. No, I. <laughs> yeah. I, it was it was Polish mail from the Netherlands. Like it was it was like something oh, PL, gotcha. which I don't think is actually Poland. But I kept seeing PL and thinking Poland, even though I think Poland is PO. Anyways, I'm an I'm not idiot. not sure what their country code is, yeah. And um, I received the mail from Europe a GameCube loader, which is a SD card replacement for the disk drive of a GameCube. Uh, so mm-hmm. I had also purchased a GameCube off of eBay, console sorry, only a, for a $40. What, a what replacement? 
Huh? A what replacement for the Basically, disc Basically, you, you, you replace the disk drive with an SD card slot. So instead of having to use disks, you literally just load ROMs onto an SD card and put that in oh, there. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Um, so I bought a I bought a console only off of eBay. Uh, thankfully, it worked. Um, I tested it. Um, it worked great. So I took it apart, took the uh, disk drive out, installed the GC loader, and uh, put a bunch of uh, their N N kit ISOs, which are mm -hmm. so if I put regular ISOs, they have to be the full size of a GameCube disc. But if I use the N kit ISOs, it's only the size of the game. And it tricks the thing into thinking it's the size of a disc. God, I um, forgot they did that for the, <laughs> the yeah. freaking disc. They did the minis. It's a well, nightmare. no, just the the, the mini DVD. The way they right? pack the games on the GameCube disc is even if your game was tiny, like you still just threw garbage data on it. Yeah, Fuck to fill it. They yeah. um, That's weird. there are a couple games. Animal Crossing twenty seven megabytes, which doesn't seem right. It's there. Uh -huh. it, there's like no I was there's nothing big in that game. I was amazed. The whole game has like three polygons and seventeen textures. Versus Tales of Symphonia, <laughs> two discs both yeah, baby. crammed to the max. Yeah, baby. Because <laughs> that game's like, fucking great. <laughs> well, when are we playing that? Uh soon, brother. Soon. I'm very excited. Okay, good. Um good. Okay, so uh I got that installed. Uh and uh honestly no hiccups. Uh downloaded all the games from my own library that I own and uh, put them all onto the SD card, loaded it up. Looks like shit on my HD TV because it's the shitty HD HD cables I have from GameStop. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Which I'm like, I should plug this into a, a CRT, but I didn't feel like doing that. But anyways, everything wait loads minute, up wait quickly. Minute, but wait, so you actually, you actually may get a cleaner image. A, a lot of HD TVs nowadays do have, composite in a weird way i would try that honestly because then you're using the tv's native upscaler which may be better than the hd cables oh i should check um yeah but regardless the program works really great uh it's swiss uh and i can just load up any games it auto does uh discs um and uh yeah i was just playing around with messing around with checking smash and the nice thing is you can just use your gamecube's memory card uh, I was just going to well, ask because it's just SD a disk drive function as a memory card too. Yeah, so it has all my data from all my GameCube games, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, Wait, and so then... you you're using the actual memory card hardware, not yes, because because the okay, SD okay. card just replaces the disk drive, so okay. everything else works perfectly fine. What about what about interface for like picking games off the ROM? What, so what it's like a you can do like? list or gallery mode. I just have them all listed out because it's way easier okay uh and i just go down through the list once you pick a pick a game it'll the first time you run it it'll patch it like all your settings on it you can do settings mm -hmm. per game so you can force like widescreen games to be widescreen uh all that you can force actually any game to be widescreen mm -hmm. but whether it supports it or not it'll just look terrible yeah. Yeah. um but yeah you just select the game it'll patch it quick uh if you change the settings and then it'll run, and then there's a button combination to just ditch right back to the uh, right back to the menu. Uh, and you can also oh, ditch nice. to the GameCube like hub menu, or the rotating block, mm -hmm. if you need to do anything there. Uh, I fired up um, the one game I did play for a little bit, uh, and not to fully get into games I played this week, but uh, Lord of the Rings: The Third Age uh, is a sort of like adventure game where you are following the fellowship as a different character uh and it is turn-based combat uh so you like you do these encounters and it's just like literally like turn-based attack with spells and all this sort of stuff um and uh first of all gandalf ian mckellen voices the entire game like gives you up to like like oh, it's him so it's it's wow. movie footage cleverly edited to not look like <laughs> directly from the movie but it is him telling you your mission and everything like brand new line nice. reads and everything which is it's very well done like he's into it which is great um i just noteworthy because i remember i wanted this as a kid and my brother zach would be like no it's a stupid turn-based game and i'll have you know it's an okay turn-based game because i am having a fun time with it the uh running into enemies 
uh, like pop-up screen scares the shit out of me every single time it happens. Uh. It makes you flinch. Uh, but the combat's pretty fun running around in this weird... Uh, you are literally... There are no jumps in time. You are walking to Mordor, I assume. Because you were oh, awesome. walking the like whole that. way. It is. It I is. Like that. When it loads you into the new area, you're just on the other side of the load from the previous area. You are just going the whole way. Um, so I honestly might keep playing it because it's pretty fun and it's kind of lame. Um, but yeah. Sorry, I was just. I was just, I was just laughing at when you said when you said you're a different character following the main party. I just picture. They just come up with some rando, you know, like it's fucking uh, Tony Stark's funeral and you got randos in the background. Like, they're just showing up in all these scenes. I, I need to look it up. You're, you're Barathor? Bar- Barathor? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fantastic name. But you're the... It's just so funny to me. You're like the captain of the Gondorian Guard of, I assume, mm-hmm. Minas Tirith. Uh, and then you meet up with this elf lady... Uh, who literally does the water horses to defeat the Nazgul. She, like, calls it as, like, a summons. It is so dope. Um, That's cool. cool. So, yeah, it's pretty fun. I'll keep playing it because it's just, like, shitty and stupid enough to be fun. Um, But I can also see it being pretty mind-blowing in whatever year it came out. So, Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Is it? it Okay. I don't mean to take a, a tangent here, but I think I always took the term lord of the rings the third age like the third age i never really thought about it is that from the books like th- is it what what, what is the other the third ages? age What's the current here? age in lord the, of the rings yeah the third age is the current yeah. age it started it second age ended with the defeat of sauron and then the third age started. okay and yeah. then the third What's age the first ended age? first age is like the uh i think first age i think ends with the elves leaving uh valinor or something like that there's some he- like heroic that. momentous thing that ends that and then the okay. third age ends with uh the defeat of sauron again uh with the ring <laughs> the defeat of the ring oh. and and then that's the fourth so age. world war two yeah gotcha okay II. and then the fourth age is currently ongoing uh supposedly yeah i kind i, I kind of want to read the cimmerillion it's it's okay. It's not the greatest. Uh, I mean, it's not. I feel like it's not meant to be a book. Book. It, it is just like that's what I've heard. Also, Ian it's was like reading the Bible. the Bible at one point, so <laughs> um, I think I did do that for that. school like three times. It's fine. Uh, the um, I will say the I remember reading Children of Huron as a kid, which is one of his like unfinished books that I think Christopher Tolkien finished, and that was pretty good. I remember being that mm-hmm. that, was, that was dope. Um, I've been I've been hankering to reread Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, but I'm like not quite ready. I think I'll just start with yeah. the Hobbit and see see where that goes. Um, once I finish, or just read Watership Down again. Dude, that book is so good. It's so <laughs> good. So, it's incredible. I've, I've thought about it recently. I think there was didn't his didn't his son write a sequel recently? Or There's something a like sequel that? that we saw. At, remember, we were at the Strand and we saw the sequel. Didn't we look it yeah, up and it's like it was about dogs or something? Uh, I can't remember. It's so water good. dog down. Books are great. <laughs> the, that that book is books <laughs> are great. Just in general. Dirt dog. Dirt dog up. Dirt dog up. Dog street down. <laughs> dog street down. <laughs> Um, that's all I have for the chit chat section the GameCube loader Uh, I'm glad it all worked uh, because it's fun to just have a GameCube that can play any game and now I can have people over to just play and I don't have to pay tons of money to get some games you can have that without yeah, <laughs> but being able to just have a GameCube doing it, uh, yeah, is, is kinda it's kind of like. It, do you guys remember that Cisco commercial from like the the late two thousands where Guarantee it's this guy? I don't. It, you may. <laughs> it was pretty popular. It was a good commercial. It's this guy, <laughs> and he pulls up to a diner, an and he just walks in. And he sits down. And he's like, I'll have a coffee. And then he looks down and there's a little jukebox. And he's like, oh, what songs you got? And the waitress behind the counter is like, all of them. And he's like, what do you mean? She goes, every song ever made is right there. 
you just have to find it and play it and then it and then it, it switches to the ad card and it's like it's like cisco cloud servers unlimited storage unlimited access and it was like oh shit and that's what I think about with like the GameCube, et cetera, is it's like it's the physical device. It looks like a normal fucking GameCube, but you have fucking every GameCube game on it. Like, that's the cool part of it that I that I really appreciate. Ian, what TV channel were you watching? <laughs> it was all over to man. get the Cisco commercial. Fox News. I probably saw it on C- <laughs> CNN or something. Okay, uh, right. Popular. It was, it was usually after though. Around the Horn. Uh, it would come on. <laughs> um, speaking of commercials, oh, I how did, about that? I Oh, one that I forgot to put in here just before Let's we get do to it. the game. Oh, go for it. Uh, I'm going to PAX West in a couple weeks. <gasps> I'm very excited for PAX West. I'm almost assuredly going to get the plague. Uh, by the time I get back, I'm sure I'll be sick. Or oh, the plague. Plague. Let, let us um. We'll, we'll have to have you on when you come back because it's been on our list for a while now. We've both been to PAX East several times. We've thought about doing pixelate trip to pax west but we're not sure if it's worth it or not seattle's cool oh i went in 2019 and it was very awesome like i had a really good time okay uh 2019 i went to pax dev too which was like i don't know i don't even know if they're doing it this year but they had a pax dev event that was before the like main pax west for a few days where they had just like people talking about like dev issues and Mm -hmm. uh, like different ways people do their jobs and stuff basically basically mini yeah. industry conference and that was super cool i had a great time with that uh and then the actual packs was great there was a they did i think it was the mix they've done other events too uh but they had like mm-hmm. a nighttime event where they just like rented out a bar and set up stations nice. for all, like indie games and i had a great time with that just chilling with like the oh uh, who was it the bite your bullet bite the bullet devs uh have haven that's what it's called the cu- the couple game kind of journey looking thing indie came out a little while ago like playstation exclusive i think at first oh death stranding oh uh, yeah funny funny, funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was really cool just to like in a small setting play and talk to indie devs like ac- like absolutely <laughs> gush about their games uh, or in some cases you run into a bunch of bugs that they've never seen before and they, they're just like <laughs> it's the first time somebody else has touched the controller oh yeah i crashed yeah. one of their games damn <laughs> it's, it's just press. <laughs> it, it was it's super fun uh and then the actual like show floor is awesome uh there's nice. at least last time there's so many games seattle's cool i hadn't been before uh seattle's cool Seattle's great, and then like I took a day or two to like go hiking and like Mount Rainier and stuff like that. So it was, it was just a really good trip. I'm excited for I think, it again. I think the worst fucking part about Seattle is that it is just not possible to live there right now. <laughs> like like price cost of living. Ian, is I live in California. Shut up. <laughs> Seattle's like uh, Seattle's, Seattle's the worse. New there. Sorry, Seattle's yeah. better than here. <laughs> is it though? Yes. I don't I don't know about that, man. It's it was bad. I, last looked, time I looked before I got my current job. I looked at Seattle. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. better than here. Granted, you might not be like inner city Seattle, but also why would you want to be? Yeah, even the northern suburbs, though, are expensive. But my point just being coming from non-California, non-Seattle, yeah. it's like, wow, this place is great, but it is absolutely not worth the fucking cost. Of oh, yeah, no, it's, to it's move out here. Yeah. It's very expensive. But like, yeah, coming from California, it's like, OK, that's about the same it's cheaper than like bay area but that's such a low bar yeah low bar sorry um (laughs) yeah maybe we'll go to pax west next year zero to add yeah we could go to pax west next year i'd be down well i'll I'll meet you there go to the i've always wanted to go to powell's in uh bookstore yeah, the bookstore. Oh, yeah. Uh, I didn't go there last time I was there. Everybody fucking talks about the Strand. I've been to the Strand twice, and both times I was disappointed. So I'm worried Powell's will end up with the same disappointment. No, but Strand's different. Strand's like... Powell's, I know people have gone to Powell's and love it, versus Strand is like more of like a successful bookstore in New York City. It's not necessarily a great bookstore. I can see that. Yo, uh, side tangent. I want to tell you about my greatest book, my my latest book adventure, which went really book. well. 
uh, I was on Facebook because you go to Facebook when you get bored of Twitter and then you get bored of Reddit sure, and then you're like, well, fuck. I don't no, work I anymore. just Let uninstalled on like all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was on Facebook and I saw a post from this organization called the Friends of the Jacksonville Public Library. And they were like, we're having our like semi-annual book sale. And I was like, OK. And they were just like, uh, you know, come on by book sale. And I was like, OK, I like books. Maggie likes books. Let's go to this book sale. So we go to this book sale. Turns out Friends of the Jacksonville Public Library is basically just the uh, Jacksonville Duval County Library Warehouse. So all their extra books, books they pulled off the shelves, etc. Just this giant warehouse full of library books. And because they're librarians, it's all organized. So it's not just random books everywhere. And they have this sale a couple times a year. And it's literally just brown paper bag, fill it with books, 15 bucks. So Maggie and I got oh. like 25 books for 15 bucks and they were all good. I mean, they didn't have like like deep cuts, but like I got like some of all fears by Tom Clancy. I got like a whole bunch of really good military history books like Maggie was picking a whole bunch of like popular literature and just one of the best like book buying experiences I've ever had, like literally just armfuls of books and barely paying anything for it. It was fantastic. You get a bunch of band books that Mad Parents made the library remove. No, because I don't I don't think the Duval County Public Library was hit. It was the schools that were hit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the local schools, <laughs> like one of the most vi the viral TikTok of like the empty elementary school school like library. I was like, shelves. is that that county? I was like, it was like three, <laughs> three miles from my house. It's like an elementary school, like three miles from my house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous. Anyways, I, hey, my cost of living's low, so <laughs> <laughs> at least there's that. I do have pudding fingers as my governor, but it's okay. Ian, I feel like some like three people could die outside your door every night, and you'd be like, "Ah, oh, the cost of living's low. This is fine." <laughs> hey, I came from Baltimore, so actually, it's much safer and less crime down here than Baltimore. <laughs> It's more like political violence than it is actual violence, you know? <laughs> and alligators. <laughs> yeah, and gators in the backyard. Gators in the courtyard. Uh, I I love a good I love a good book sale. There's a bookstore like 30 minutes away from me that I really like that I got some bangers of of books from there. Uh, mm -hmm. but there were some great ones back um by my parents there. One of the libraries just had a used bookstore nice on the lower level and it was also the organized the way you're saying and it was just fan and the other thing they would sell i don't think they were legally allowed to but they would sell the like work print copies of books that they were like oh, sent yeah. for so I, I have steve mcqueen's like biography but it's the work print edition so it's just like it's just yeah. like a shitty cover What's and all this sort print? of stuff is it just like a it's what they send like out for like people to review like review oh, okay. uh, it, it, it looks it looks pretty much like the first edition it just has stuff on it where it's like work print not for sale like stuff yeah. like that. and it may have typos in it yeah so uh and i remember as a kid just buying paperback star wars books just so many oh yeah oh, oh man. Books are yeah so i had good. a couple yeah. i had a couple friends with just shelves full of those things oh so good. yeah this place had a section for those, but they were all picked over by the time we got there. That's the like worst. literally a Star Wars section, but it was. Empty. It's like I, I've been super. I read um, uh, Jack Reacher novels as like palate cleansers because they're like super good. They're like they had a bunch of those. Yeah, I got two of them. Oh, I hate you. Yeah. They never. Uh, and I'm reading them in order like a schmuck, but um, they never have them anywhere I look for them. The librarians are always yeah. like, or the sellers are always like, yeah, they were just in. They're very popular. And I'm like. But thankfully, I just put them on my Kindle now. But man, Jack Reacher, yeah. it's just have like you, crazy. Have you seen the movie, by the way, the Tom Cruise one? It's actually very good. Yeah, it's not bad. I haven't read. I, I saw good. the movie. I haven't read the book that one's based off of. But the I heard the TV show is actually OK. Um, the John I don't know. One? No, 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 that's, that's Jack, Jack Ryan. Ryan. Oh, that's Jack. That one's OK. They all sound the they sound you're fine. They, yeah, yeah. But, jack reacher so cool thing, <laughs> the thing about the thing about the jack reacher one is that i don't want to watch the tv show because 
I don't know if you remember this. I remember a little bit, but basically Jack Reacher in the books is this giant ex Marine. They make the movie with Tom Cruise and Tom Cruise is like five, foot man. six or something. Small yeah, he's man. small. And the fans were so fucking pissed. They were like, how dare you? This isn't our real Jack Reacher. And so when they made the TV show, they deliberately went to somebody huge. So I can't tell if they actually like the TV show or if they're just like, this is my Jack Reacher, not no. Tom Cruise. But you Jack know? Reacher it's is like, small. He's not a big guy in the books. In the books. That's what I don't. That's the thing. It's like, (laughs) so there's like this like fan. There's like this fan fervor around it, like hatred and love for various versions, and it makes it hard for me to tell is the TV show actually good or not. And and that means I'm just never gonna try it. That's how I I felt the first few episodes of the Halo show. Like I didn't know if people were just was okay. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) until everyone was like, "This show's bad." But yeah, I didn't. I didn't know if like people were just like, "Oh, this ain't my John Master Chief," or yeah, it was actually bad. Turns out it was the latter. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I don't mean to extend the chit chat section. That's OK. Maybe I'll talk. Maybe I'll talk about a little bit more of it next week. But I have been watching the Twisted Metal TV show. I'm a little more than halfway through. I've heard good things. I have too. I it has good things. Barely <laughs> plural. But overall, it's worse than Halo. So it's wow. it's it's a lot of very few diamonds wow. in the rough with that. Um, I'm pretty much the only, opposite of whatever. <laughs> I wasn't going to watch it at all, but I saw this one clip that made me laugh. And then I realized one of the writers on the show, Sean Diston, is on comedy bang bang a lot. And he's hysterical. And I was like, OK, I need to support this com this this comedian that I like. And he's a writer. So I know he's going to put good jokes in it. And literally, I was watching it and there was one really good episode I loved. And at the end of it, it was like written by Sean Diston. And I was like, OK, OK. So I'm basically only watching the show because I know there's one really good comedian in it. <laughs> and there's just barely enough sprinkling of good jokes for me to be like, OK, I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll keep watching this. Wow. Yeah, I a couple people in the in the news chat at work were saying it was good. Or like taller. Yeah, they're stupid. Um, Barely. Yeah, uh, but yeah. like that first trailer, I was just like, oh no! It looked horrible. <laughs> it looked uh, so bad from the trailers. L- like, like in retrospect, I I think the trailer just did a bad job of like showing the. It, okay, so let me let me tell you the clip that I saw that made me laugh, and this is from like the first five minutes of the series. Is it's uh the main character whose name is John Doe. And he's like, he's like out in the wilderness, right? And he's like by himself. It's post apocalyptic. And he's like, he like stops at the ocean and he like looks at the ocean and he looks over and he sees this little like, like this like sea lion or seal that's just like, orf, orf, orf. and he's like, hi. And then hard cut to a piece of seal meat hitting the pan. And he's like eating the seal. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's funny. The problem is the show is constantly trying to be funny, but it's not well made. And there's maybe three good jokes per episode so it's just too threadbare between the things that hit that to make it worth watching so it's it's a bit of a pain having to watch it honestly but i'm i'm sticking for it i don't know why i think it's because it makes me laugh once an episode not a good reason to watch it honestly (laughs) no it's a fantastic reason to watch it you can watch it as a good reason not to have one good actor play a character and then have another good actor do the voice for the same character I will say, Sweet Tooth actually works very well on the show. It works much oh, better. Than all the clips think. I've seen, it does not. But oh, totally, totally, I agree. I, I, and I, it's not necessarily bad clips. I think it's just out of context on its own. They don't play, but inside the show, it actually does kind of work. But then again, okay. don't watch the show. So I mean, I don't have Peacock, <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm not going to. And That's I'm like, fair. God, I'm super not getting Peacock just to watch this show. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. I do have Peacock, but I'm still not going to watch it. <laughs> um, oh, oh, OK, uh, look, we're on a full fucking tangent here. You know what is on Peacock, though? That is Lombo. worth getting Peacock. Paul T. Goldman. Have you guys no. seen that show? I don't know what you're talking about. OK, look, we don't have to talk about it. I'm just going to drop it here. You have to look him. up the trailer for Paul T. Goldman, the show. It's fucking incredible. It's it's kind of like a Nathan Fielder show in how it mixes fiction and reality. It's fucking insane. And it 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 is one of the best TV shows I've ever seen. It's called Paul T. Goldman. You guys will have to look it up later. Anyways, oh, not Paul T. Goldman. Yeah, Paul. Oh, like I know name. what this is. Paul. Yes, this it's is incredible. about the guy it's, who um, they like bought story. his life story. 
right and then they do reenactments and it's i it's just it's this guy who went through something crazy and so he's helping make the show he's telling his story but they're doing reenactments starring himself at the same time and it fucking goes places folks it's incredible yeah. you I have to watch it good i just got a seven it's out very, of ten on good. imdb which is it's a 10 out of 10 no which joke is a 10 it's out of 10 for ian so okay i mean it's probably like a two out of ten all right yeah <laughs> so don't watch it folks. <laughs> <sighs> moving on to the next section of the tv show not tv show <laughs> podcast <laughs> fuck <laughs> oh sorry the writer's strike this the, the my my teleprompter really is really <laughs> it's just blank now uh, um David, we're going to talk about the games we've been playing this week. I'm going to start with you because you're not playing Baldur's Gate 3. So please. Yet. Not playing yet. it yet. Not playing it yet. It is yet. installed on my Steam Deck. I just haven't played it yet. Uh... Right, sorry, I was just about. Will, have you played it on the Steam Deck yet? I'm curious how that goes. It's installed. It's a lot of text I, ha reading. I haven't played it yet. It's got to be a nightmare on Steam Deck, to be honest with you. Because it's a lot of reading, a lot of UI manipulation. Well, I heard a controller I, it controls really well. So The only I'm reason I downloaded it to Steam Deck is because I have played Divinity on Steam Deck, which ran like immaculately. It was great. Loved it. Well, I'm, I'm thinking less about like uh, one of the things Baldur's Gate does is like if you're looking at an item and it has words highlighted, you hit T to hover over those words, then it tells you what they are. And then it's like, oh, it's a spell. OK, let me hit T again. So you end up having to like hover over a lot of stuff and read a lot of text and I could that still makes work me on think it, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's super helpful. Yeah, that sounds great. That, that's that's I, I like that feature in Pentiment. So, yeah, <laughs> I <cool. laughs> shut up. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Will didn't know he could click the underlined word. <laughs> <laughs> well, if someone had told me the fucking menu did. I played with it twice at the beginning of the game. I said, this fucking menu doesn't do anything. And I never touched it again. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, David. What, what have you been playing? Oh, it's all good. Uh, so one of the games I played with the rest of the save data, folks, because it is a short game. Uh, it was a one streamer for us. Was Vemba. Have either of you heard of this game? No, I have not. Okay. So Vemba is a very cool game liked it a lot on my shortlist for like top 10 of the year not not gonna be game of the year but definitely on my top 10 so far uh so vemba is a it's very much a narrative game in the lens of a cooking game so you play <laughs> as vemba titular character uh who who along with her husband are immigrants from south india to toronto canada and mm -hmm. every level of the game is a different recipe. And every level of the game, there's a time skip. And they use scenes before, during, and after cooking to kind of tell the story of Venba's life, basically, from probably 20-something up until, like, old age. Uh, and it is... It was incredible. I love this game. If you're not streaming it, probably like a two hour game. It's not long. Mm -hmm. uh, but as someone who loves cooking and loves narrative games, like it just absolutely hit for me. Uh, there are what you do in the cooking sections is you have this like family heirloom cookbook that has recipes in it. And when you're playing as a Vemba, like the cookbook's damaged in a lot of places. So it's kind of a puzzle game when you're cooking as well it's not like cooking mama where things are timed and there's hurry general that's not true in any of them it's more mm -hmm. of a puzzle of trying to figure out like okay how do i make this recipe work because half of it is smudged <laughs> like half of the words are smudged how do i put this together uh so it's like a puzzle game at the same time too and just everything worked together really well music characters writing was fantastic literally put two out of the three of us streaming to tears by the end. Uh, like it was very good, very heartfelt hit on a lot of heartstrings that none of us were expecting. <laughs> we we're like, Oh, this seems like such a happy game. And then like, bam, a couple things of trauma. We're like, Oh, okay. 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 Oof. Cool. Uh, no and not, not like, not like visual. You see things happening, but just like, Oh, that implies that it's hard for a few of us. Yeah. Um, it's like overall game is great. The, the, 
it's, do you want some spoilers? You gonna play this no. game? No, because I think okay. we may. I, I, okay. I mean, I put it on our game of the year list as in something we should okay. at least try. I will. I will say it happens in the first level, so this this won't be. You'll find this out in like ten minutes in the game. But the Venba has in the first level finds out she's pregnant, right? <sighs> And so through the rest of the game, it's also like not just relationship between her and her husband and their story. It's also their kid's story and his relationship with Vemba and his dad. Uh, it's so good. It's very good. And it also follows like the kid growing up in an immigrant family while also being a Canadian. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a lot of tension there in different pieces. They do a really cool thing with the text that took us a long time to catch on to. So this will help you where text that is white is <laughs> <Indeed>. in <laughs> no it's not that text that oh. is white is in their native dialect mm-hmm. and text that is yellow is english which we didn't Canadian. catch until like the son was like old enough to talk and things and like oh, he, okay, his gotcha. his text is yellow and we're like this why is his text yellow and then at one point venba's like speaking <laughs> tamil which is their language and I was like, oh, this would have been helpful because they used the yellow text thing earlier than this. <laughs> and I, I, yeah. we, missed, we missed some context earlier that would have helped. So that's why I told you. Uh, but it's it's just such a good story. It's so short. Uh, it, I think it's even on Game Pass. I could be mistaken. Uh, let me, let me check that real quick. I'm I'd love to play it, but sure it um, I don't know if you're aware, but it's Baldur's Gate three times. So there's no time. Ian, this game is two hours. Yeah, sorry, I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, it is on Game Pass. Ooh, God bless you, Phil Spencer. Thank you, Daddy. So, absolutely, absolutely worth a Game Pass play. It is two hours. It's small. Great music. Great game. Great narrative. I could not recommend this game more. Uh, it is fantastic. Nice. Great indie game. Sounds great. All right. Uh, the other game I am slowly getting through is Final Fantasy 16. I think I'm almost done, which means I probably have like 20 hours left because it's a JRPG and that's just how that go. Mm-hmm. Uh, have, have I have you played Final Fantasy 16 yet? I don't no, I, I can't tell if I want to or not. I may play the demo a bit. I'm still catching point. up with the series. The demo is what hooked me. Because I was on the fence for this one and then I played the demo and I was like. This feels pretty good. Plays pretty, pretty, yeah. pretty dang well. Uh, and even uh, tens of hours in, like, combat's really good. Like, really, really, really good. It's very... I described this to, I think, Zach the other day of, like, this is a Tales game if a Tales game had a budget <laughs> in, in terms okay. of combat. So, like, it's very action-oriented. Uh, there's lots of abilities and stuff going on, lots of options. Uh, it, it, and it's got it's got some Devil May Cry in it because I mean the combat designer came from Devil May Cry, um, so it's got some of that in their action. Like you can juggle people in the air using your abilities if you upgrade the right ones. Like you can absolutely mm-hmm. juggle people for forever. Uh, not bosses doesn't work for them. Uh, but overall, combat's great. The characters have been a real mixed bag. Like some of them I really like, and some of them like. People kind of suck. Most of the antagonists are really boring, which is a bummer. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love me a, a good complex villain, and so far they are very not that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but some of your allies are rad, and I actually kind of dig Clive, the main character. He looks real basic. He's the freaking main character that uh, Yoshi P's wanted for Final Fantasy fourteen for the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so have you because have you all seen like their trailers they do for Final Fantasy 14 expansions no there's always a character that is supposed to represent the player character in their trailers and it's always the dude who looks dead on Clive like, <laughs> like it's oh. just fucking Clive that character in those trailers is not in Final Fantasy 14 he is like the player avatar in the trailers jeez oh that's pretty and, funny and yeah like it, this Clive very much feels like they just took that character and were like, we want him as the main <laughs> character. Uh, mm-hmm. Voice acting for this game is very good, though. Absolutely, like, ton, ton voice acting. It's real good. Nice. Uh, story I am mixed on so far. Mm-hmm. We'll see if they land it, but so far, 
it started strong and it does not feel like it will end strong. <laughs> this is kind yeah. of where I'm at on story. I, I do want to give it a chance at some point. I think my anxiety is that it feels like this could be in a top 10 goatee contender. And it could. That makes me think I need to play it this year, but I don't know if you're aware, but there's a fuckload of games out right now and even more. And there's all so of them are goatee contenders. There's and I'm just so like, Ian, I have a spreadsheet and like, I highlight in my spreadsheet which ones I think are contenders. Mm Mm-hmm. I have 12 highlighted for, like, the next two months. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck video games? Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. We have... (laughs) 12 games on our possible goey list so far and that that is only games that we have played and somebody has nominated and i believe yeah. there's an additional eight that are on the list as somebody should play this in case it is a goatee oh y'all if y'all none of y'all played viewfinder or dave the diver add that to that it's, list yeah well dave the diver's not on the list but uh viewfinder is a possible it's, so good. it's a down there as somebody needs to try it so good Dave the Diver, though, didn't we liked it, didn't make it, though. Yeah, too much story. I can un- I can understand that, but uh, yeah. I really liked it. Ven- er, Vemba and Viewfinder are probably going to be on my list for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, we'll definitely try both of those. Too many fucking oh, games. God, I though. forgot Pikmin 4 came out, too. I totally oh. forgot to play that. I know. And it got God, great reviews. <laughs> <reviews. laughs> so even many it. games. <laughs> it's crazy. It's a nightmare. I'm telling you right now uh moving on honestly well genuine question i know this is a tangent oh god yeah how do you feel for like with work for this stuff like how does that (laughs) how does looking at the game schedule make your life as like yeah it's it's i mean i did use the word nightmare only in the sense that i have to cover a lot of video games that i don't give a flying fuck about uh, like tomorrow, I have to play a whole heck of a lot of the Mortal Kombat One beta. Um, do I want to do that? No. Are <laughs> somehow people uh, who follow Gamespot on social ravenous for Mortal Kombat? Uh, yes. Y- yeah. You put yeah. up a thing about Zelda. They don't, no one gives a shit about anything related to Legend of Zelda anymore. 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 Uh, no, like, I, or like, I mean, t- specific stuff, like I do all ultra hand builds roundup every week. That's really popular. But like, if I did like a evolution of, of Zelda or a link in oh, Zelda yeah. games and stuff like that, but I do an evolution of sub zero fatalities, billions of like people just love mortal Kombat, And I think I that's do. just like the age of the people who, who first subscribe to a lot of stuff, just like mortal Kombat and everything like that. But, um, yeah. When so I was looking at. I was looking at a bestseller of like best, all the best-selling games for each year for the past 20 years. Like Mortal Kombat was the best-selling game of 1993. It 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 might not it, be the first one, it might have been two. But and yeah. I think people attribute a lot of nostalgia to it. And it's just like it's one of those games like I mm-hmm. I think Mortal Kombat's great. I think it's really cool. I don't play it, but I, I acknowledge that it's really cool. My favorite one is Shaolin Monks, which isn't a Mortal Kombat game. So, re- like, really? <laughs> yeah. I think if I could speak for you, you don't have a problem with Mortal Kombat. You have a problem with the entire fighting game genre because it's just kind of fucked itself yeah, into I'm a not nasty a fighting corner. Game um, yeah. It's like a fun thing for me. Uh, and, and, and I'd rather play yeah. Smash because I can have four people play. Uh, but to answer your question, David, yeah, like, we, we have planning meetings for stuff coming out. The nice thing is, like, a lot of games don't necessarily hit on the side of social uh but they'll be covered in the rest of the company um like video and editorial and stuff but it really depends like uh if 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 i want to cover something then i can like absolutely hit it but yeah like stuff like elden ring tears of the kingdom and games coming up it's just like you we plan weeks in ahead to make sure like this is gonna be our like and and we're not perfect but it's like this is gonna be our strategy let's try to hit this and then in between that stuff, we just backfill with like evergreen, cool content and, and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, it's daunting, but it's also you can you can plan your peaks and valleys better, which is kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, the stacked. It's so nice when the game gets delayed. Um, <laughs> but it, like a specific one that calls to mind is when everything get, kept getting pushed to February 2023 from last year. And I just remember every yep. time it happened um 
in the news and editorial chat, someone would be like, hey, it's moved to February. I don't think there's anything coming out that month, so we should be okay. When, like, every game was being moved to February. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a good... Actually, That's, yeah, that is kind of how I feel about August and October. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and November this year. So it's great to see, uh, to be announced at things, because I'm just like, oh, I don't have to worry about it for a while. <laughs> Thank God. Oh, yeah, February was really busy this year, huh? Yeah, I think some stuff got it's pushed out. It's been a crazy like, year. Like, um, Hogwarts Legacy got pushed out of it, and yeah. a couple of, like, uh, I mean, there's still and all that. Yeah, but there's still a lot of big games. As of, like, October 2022, it was, like... 10 games that were going to be in February. <laughs> we were just like, please, God, please, no, no. Something move. <laughs> <laughs> Something. Um, so it worked out. Uh, moving on, Ian, you want to talk some Baldur's Gate 3? Yeah. Yeah, we got about hour, two hours. Right? Yeah, we got about two, two yeah. and a half. Yeah. Uh, you want to go first or should I go first with my points? I feel like you're going to talk anyways. So you might as well go. <laughs> No, that means you have to get yours in before I take over. Uh, I just want to say I'm still playing well, Baldur's Gate. I mean, I'll just... Uh... <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3. You really fell for that, Will. I know. <laughs> I had to. Uh, it's funny. I keep... I keep check. I haven't played in the past four or five days, uh, but I keep checking... I see when you're on, Ian, and I keep checking your time versus mine, and you slowly catching up to me. Because I think I have 36 yeah, hours... And you were at like 25 or 26 or something. You were 29, I think. Oh, really? Because I was yeah. going by the in game. The, the oh, oh I'm going by Steam. Oh, yeah. My in game versus Steam uh, is wildly different because of I wonder, like, save scum and the, stuff. Yeah. I wonder if the, if the in game timer resets with save loads. That yeah, could be yeah, it. Yeah, it does. Um, that's the big difference. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I think the main thing that I've come across that I love so much about it is. Um, the ability to talk like it's rare yes. that a video game yes. so perfectly yes. matches your ability to talk and to attribute yes. this to D&D I will talk my way out of anything in anything in any video game I always try to talk my way out of things for some reason yes. I love doing that I love talking my way out of it and the ability to do this in Baldur's Gate I think of the thing I want to do and it's somehow an option and it's so good. Yeah. It happens every time I have talked my way out of probably not probably 80% of the boss fights in this game. I have boss fights, 80% really? of the boss fights and, Dang. and crowd fights. I have talked my way out of, um, I, I just had my first one where I talked them out of it and, it felt very good. It was one of those things where it's like, this guy feels dangerous. I can't tell if he's a boss or just a rando. And it's really weird. And I was talking to him and it got to this point where I could be like, hey, how about instead of letting your minions attack me? What if you like let them attack you? That's the ultimate test of of, of leadership, right? <laughs> and it was like it was like charisma. It was like persuasion check 21. And I rolled like a 30 because my persuasion is super high. And he was like, OK, and he just stabbed him to death. And I was like, was he a boss? And I looked his health and it was like 200 hp and i was like well that felt great it was <laughs> it was amazing i had missed that and someone was like oh or i had gotten to a point of no return not a, not actually but it was like oh go clean up some things because some quests will become unavailable uh which mm -hmm. i immediately went through to see what quests became unavailable and i was like ah, i'll just go back and do them anyways but i went back and did exactly what you're talking about and my first time through like, my first time through stuff, I'll usually mess up and do things, and then I'll, like, think of the way I actually want to do it, and I'll reload and kind of, like, go through it. Like, I'll be reckless on purpose, but the first time through that area, I did that route, and I was just like, that felt so good. It felt so yeah, good that yeah. that was an option. <laughs> I, and even even when it doesn't work out, it still is just, it feels so good that the game lets you do it and has a a some sort of conclusion or thing that happens so i had an incident last night where i was talking to uh somebody who was calling themselves a god and they clearly had a lot of magical powers they were kind of immortal etc but i knew some of their backstory because i'd read a book like 10 hours ago and i was like i don't think you're actually a god i think you're just lying to people and you have some secret magic powers so anyways they're talking to me and they're just like bow before your god and i'm like what do you want and they're like i need you to go kill this person for me and i was like and it was literally like there were three options right and they were like they were like uh oh yes magnificent one i'll 
I'll do that. And the other one was like, no, I don't think I want to. And the third one was like, if you're a god, why can't you kill him yourself? And so I picked the third one. I picked the third one. And the god goes, I'm sorry. I don't think I heard that right. And then it shows the options again. And they're slightly different. And it's basically, no, it was two options this time. It was like, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Or, or I mean, if you're a god, you could just kill them yourselves, right? And I, so, of course, I picked the second one. And, and the god was just like, enough of this. Clearly, you need to be taught a lesson. And, like, literally, it was, like, three frames of a combat. Like, three frames is in, like, literally it loaded into a combat scene and then immediately flipped over. No cutscene, no actual combat. Immediately just flipped over to your party is dead. Game over. Like, exit or load. <laughs> And I was like, I guess they kind of are a god. I found out. <laughs> like, it's like it's exactly like you're saying. All the characters are so interesting. All the dialogue options are so interesting. And it, it really doesn't feel like it's shoehorning you. But it's not unlimited possibilities. They've just covered enough of the spread of possibilities yeah. and made each of them pay off and not dead end necessarily that it feels so satisfying. And that's... I, I, I'm 30 hours into this game normally. I, 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 I Fuck off talking in video games. Fuck off reading. Fuck off cutscenes. I'm still religiously watching every single one of them because the story's good enough and because I'm enthralled by it. It's fantastic. What else are you doing in the game, Will? Uh, I am... You know, I, I'm backtracking now and completing an area that before I move forward, um, I've... Uh, I'm helping out some characters with their personal stuff. Um, I just helped Carlac with a bunch of things. Uh, and mm -hmm. then um, I was just like, there's some quests that I'm like, I learned just from like people at work or like looking it up that you can't actually complete at this time. But I just like, part of me needs to know that I can't complete them yet. Um, because yeah. like, I don't know if like it, they're vague and it's like, like one of them is like cleanse this land by talking to this person. And you're like, Oh, let me try to find the person. And it sometimes it's like, Oh, they're not here until a later act. And you're like, Oh, okay. Um, it would but be now, helpful if the game told you that for someone. <laughs> yeah. So, and I don't think it was that quest specifically, but it's just the one. That but it's head. like, it's. It's, it's like that's completely a valid criticism, but I was almost thinking earlier like an opposite perspective, which is I never feel lost in that game and I never feel like, oh, what am I supposed to be doing next or like where am I supposed to be going? It's almost like a Yakuza game where it's just like you're in the world. There are so many different things you can do. You know that mo no matter where you go, there will be something for you to do and it's worth it. Not because there's a reward or XP, but because it's like literally entertaining and so I'm not I, I very rarely open my journal, which is where your quests are listed, because usually I'm just like, oh, yeah, I need to get to that tower. Eventually, there's a bunch of empty map between me and that. I guess I'll just walk around. Oh, these guys need my help. I guess I'm going to do. Oh, and then you need and it ends up being this thing where there are a lot of quests. And you're right. Some of them are not set up great with a lot of information, but it doesn't matter to me because there's so many of them and every single one is rewarding that it's enjoyable just fucking ping ponging around and picking them up and doing this here and there. It's just crazy how how much there is in that world oh, and how satisfying yeah. it is. I, I was mainly just saying, like, if you no, right, physically though. can't do one yet, they should that tell you. sucks because yeah. you can you can waste like hours, right? Just looking for a thing. And yeah. Like, yeah. Sorry, you can't do yeah, that till like right. three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it's fun, like to be able to do what you're saying, Ian. Uh, and and the game gives you so many options. Like there was one thing I found, uh, and it ended up giving my main character plus five to like three or four of my core uh, abilities. I just did that, <laughs> and yep. I was like. And it's for the until your next long rest, and I was like, I guess I'm never long resting ever again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what, like, why would I do that? I was like, yeah. So, and it was literally just something tiny, random in the world, but it it's just a new area, and it's it's like it's it's one of those things where the world is just so fucking packed with little tiny little things, and every single one of them is rewarding yeah. in some way. And discovering, um, discovering. When you discover something before you're supposed to, you don't think of it as a failing of the developers. You think of it as a failing of the person who set up the trap in the game. Like, like I've come across yes. a group of enemies that are ready to ambush me, and I just go, fucking idiots, why'd you hide there? Like, <laughs> yeah. like I blame it on them. <laughs> Not that it's a failing of the yeah. dev, they did it on purpose, but it's just like, 
oh, oh, I found it's the like, secret door, idiots. Uh, it's like, you, fucking, it. you fucking oh. idiot. Don't you know I lost my eye 20 hours ago and now I have a magic eye that can see people that are invisible? I can fucking see you right now, you <laughs> idiot. You know, so Even back great. in like Divinity 1, they, they had some of that stuff. Like I yeah. remember playing that early, earlier this year, last year. And like, you know, accidentally kill someone or pickpocket them and you find a thing and you're like, oh, eh, this thing's weird. 20 hours later, it's like, oh, I just cleared a puzzle because, you know, I, I did a that. thing back there with the guy <laughs> who happened to, if he was still alive and I didn't murk him at that time, he would be here as like a boss <laughs> and like set it up <laughs> yeah. and everything. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's uh, crazy. I did, I did come across one thing though, which is, um, and I, this is the problem. I don't know if it's a glitch or if the person I'm talking to is saying, okay, so someone died who was like relatively important. They were a leader mm -hmm. of a thing and they died during the combat. And now this other guy became the leader and the game acknowledged that. And then my game glitched where it was like, I had to talk to the leader still, but he had left already. Um, the secondary leader. So now 30 hours later, I encounter a person who's part of their group again, and they're like, oh, go talk to, uh, we were walking here with the, ori and they say the original leader name. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, are you saying that because the game's messed up and you forgot to sub in the correct leader name in this voice line? Or are you saying that because you're not really who you say you are and you didn't know that the leader died uh, and you're a child and I should just kill you because you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know the answer to this, yeah. but I'm going to find out. So yeah, and that's yeah, where exactly. saves coming comes in. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's escape exactly. oh, I come spam F5 walking through the world. Yeah, I've, I've been doing that too, but it's it's. I'm not really safe scumming where I'm like doing it for the optimal outcome. It's literally situations like that where I'm like, I think I want to try something weird. And I don't know if the game like exa like like back talking yeah. the God. I was like, this could go bad. Let me save. And then <laughs> yeah. Do it. And also like and if I'm still alive, I'll go with it. You know, I use say scum where in D&D &D the DM would be like, are you sure you want to do are that? You sure? That's yeah. what yeah, I use exactly. save scumming for where I know the yeah. DM is saying that, but there's no actual DM. So I have to do it myself. Yeah, I, I did have one option. I think the only time that I literally save scummed and did like a hard 180 from a path that I accidentally went down. And this kind of speaks to the game's flexibility was essentially I was. I was in a in a place with a lot of friendly people. So it was literally like, here's little kids, some refugees, some like uh, local local harpers. <laughs> and they were it's like, this is our up. little refuge. They're like, this is our little refuge. You want to trade with us? And like, here's the lady. And I was talking to the lady and she's like, hey, I need you to go. And, and uh, honestly, I think this is this is probably the only bad conversation I've had in the game. And the lady was literally like, I need you to go to the enemy stronghold. You're in a good position because you can pretend to be one of them. Go to their stronghold, find out what they're doing, kill this guy, whatever. And I was like, okay, great. And then this cutscene happens, and one of the uh, enemy guys flies in and is just like, I'm here to kidnap the lady. And he starts talking to me. And, and like, my options are like, fuck you, I'm going to fight. Like, I I'm not part of this. Or, like, pretend to be with the bad guy. And I was like... I'm going to pretend to be with the bad guy. It's kind of what the lady wants me to do. Like, this is my in, right? So I go with that. And oh, the bad no. guy's like, great. And it goes to combat. And all the fucking civilians in the place are now hostile. <laughs> and it's me and the bad guy together and like his three minions. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill all these civilians. And I had to like back the fuck out and load the previous save. Because I was yeah. like, no, 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 no. That was the only time the conversation felt like it wasn't perfectly imminent it but 30 fucking hours in and the fact that it had that as like okay you want to fuck up here you go kill all these civilians that game's fucking great folks it's amazing that fight took me that fight took me a couple tries because i kept reloading it because there's like a, a fail and condition save. and uh i kept reloading it because yeah. i said i'm not failing this mission and, and at that point it's not saves coming it's this is a puzzle and i want to solve the puzzle because i know i can mm -hmm. Uh, and that was like the fun bit about it, and I solved it, and everyone died. I mean, that's that's how like me not... and Jason play fire. Like Jason plays Fire Emblem like that. I play Fire Emblem like that. Of like, mm -hmm. Fire Emblem maps are just puzzles. Figuring oh, out how to yeah. get through it. But uh, this one, this one's nice because I know exactly what Will's talking about. 
actually there's there's two things in that fight that can go wrong and both of them kind of went wrong for me and i was like them's the fucking breaks you know this is a role-playing yep. game i made some mistakes i didn't yeah. do this combat right and it just fucking goes with it and and i'm not saying that's better or worse but but that's one of the strengths of the game is that it's not like you failed the level fuck you redo it you know this is it's literally just like okay that's the state of the world you're in now you made some yep. choices things have gone yeah. wrong i you know, need to start you're, you're supposed that. to protect real dead now <laughs> yeah yeah um is is that all we got? Do you want to talk more about Baldur's Gate three? You got more? Oh, we got next week. We got We're next good? week. We got the whole year. We got the whole year. Uh, speaking of Fire Emblem, I've been back on my bullshit, uh, playing some Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. Let's go. It's uh, so good. I was about halfway through, uh, and then Jason and I, after last week's local chat, we stayed on and talked for like another half an hour about tactics oh games. God. He was like, "Oh man, I can't believe you didn't tell me you were playing Path of Radiance." And then my soul was crushed because I was like, pretty sure. And then I realized like he had was going to be on an episode and then he missed it. And I had never actually told him I was playing Path of Radiance. So anyways, he was like, oh, you should pick it back up. Um, so I picked it back up. Fantastic fucking game. It is. I mean, this whole time I was searching for a great game to play on my Steam Deck while watching TV. And Path mm -hmm. Fire Emblem Games is it. Like you, you pause the show during the cutscenes, you get ready for the battle, and then you just play the battle for like three hours because you get really far into it and you forgot to save, and then you you die and lose someone, and you just reload the entire thing over again. Yeah, um, enemies roll a crit on a one percent chance, and then yeah, you're like, well, yeah. it is, <laughs> it is, and that's another thing. It's like I've I never thought of that game not as a puzzle game. Like in the same way, I would just reload picto chat or picto chat yeah. um pick cross if i accidentally hit an x and it marked my time i would just do, i would just do that here and it, it's path of radiance so good so good it's um, really good that's one of my favorites it's, it's so it's good really good how uh, far into it are you i'm uh mission 22 or 3 okay you're good you're good chunk in okay yeah Damn. i finished protecting the heron boy now he's with me uh and now i'm in oh you now? in the forest or yeah, I did all the forest stuff with the creepy okay. pervert. Uh, yeah, okay. Lord, you're through the like, like four part mission. It felt so <laughs> yeah. dark. Like I was not That's expecting it was. that. I was like, holy <laughs> was real, crap! Um, real dark, and then they're like, here, have a four part mission or whatever. Yeah, uh, like was. my yeah. beauty, this fat lord. Oh, it was gross. I felt sick. Yeah, he be nasty. I mean, I finished, <laughs> but still. Uh, no, I'm I'm like twenty. Three or twenty-four. I, I forget the exact spot I'm at. Um, but uh, we had the we had the um, the 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 thing from Mist was stolen. I think was what it was. So anyway, yeah. it, it, it's the necklace. Yeah, the necklace. It's super fun. I really like. I really like that sort of puzzle game. So it, it's it's going great. Uh, the other game I've been playing uh, with some friends is Dark and Darker. Uh, which is not quite back on Steam yet, but you can buy it from the website. Uh, it is a... Oh, it's that game! Okay. It is a Tarkov-type game, uh, but it is Dungeons & Dragons medieval -y fantasy. Uh, you spawn in a giant maze, uh, and you are looking for loot and killing skeletons and other players, and then you find a portal, cast the scroll of portal to get out, and then you get out with your loot. Um... It's, I didn't it's not like that was an extraction game. Okay. Yeah, it's an extraction game. It's not. We were playing two, so it's three groups of three, but we were only two people, so we we're kind of messing around and having fun. It, it's genuinely cool because the combat is so slow. It's very like swing your sword slow and like physical, and you got to block and like everywhere your sword hits, uh -huh. like the length of your sword can hit. Uh, so like if you're, you and your friend are attacking someone who's between you, you can hit the guy on the other side. Uh, and gotcha. so it feels really good because there's sort of a dance to it. It's not like peek around the corner, shoot a guy with a gun a bunch. Um, you, you can see someone and sort of dance around them and, uh, and come to like a, an understanding if you want to. Uh, the al also funny thing is like, uh, we opened a scroll at the end to get out and right as my, uh, the scroll loaded, the portal loaded for my friend, a rogue sprinted out and jumped into the portal and got out because i guess as your animation to open the portal ends there's like a pause for a second and they can jump into the portal um you can turn lights off uh there's like braziers everywhere it's very much 
honest like really playing on dark and darker like uh you can really hide well uh there's all the lights can be turned on and off uh you can close doors you can reclose chests there's mimics uh in the game which oh, no. uh <laughs> i had died my friend found a secret uh like wall that's like crouch height so he opened the secret wall went inside closed the secret wall because there was a guy on the other side who couldn't get in and then he opens his torch and he goes oh there's a chest in here and i see him open the chest and it just turns into a mimic and it goes dark and it's just him <laughs> swinging his sword in the dark and then he just dies Jeez. and it was just like oh god um so it's fun uh, i paid i think it was 30 bucks on their website to buy it i don't think it's worth 30 bucks in the state it's in uh but i just really want to check it out and my friend has been playing it so i was like let me play with someone who knows what they're doing um so it's a pretty good time i i i would recommend it once it's like at a bigger release probably when it comes back to steam and all that jazz um and the final game i've been playing i am allowed to say three words and that is all i'm allowed to say i'm playing starfield okay all right nice. i thought it was gonna be me play starfield okay me play. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all i'm allowed to say so it's surprising honestly that y'all got it early because that was not the bethesda policy for a while yeah i think it's the xbox policy uh for sure that's fair that's fair mm -hmm. uh so moving on that's all the games we can talk about this week uh do we want to hit any of this news or should we go straight to the wishlist spotlight let's go to spotlight and then let's get the fuck out of here let's get the fuck folks the wishlist spotlight they're for making, this week. Why are they making a movie of Slime Ranger? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, did, so I didn't know. read this. One. Sorry. I did not read this before the show. So I was just <laughs> like, I read it just now. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> everything. Uh, Last of Us fever. Everything is getting. And you got uh, Barbie fever on top. IP craziness. Folks, the wishlist spotlight for this week is Sebel Engineering. Uh, which is oh, a game God. in which you are uh, a game about fixing roads. Use your wrench and hammer to guide the cars to their destination. Play an overhead view or run around in the first person. Explore, solve levels on foot is what it says here on the Steam page. I saw a GIF of this online, and it was extremely funny. Uh, you got to look at pictures of this. It is just roads and cars flying everywhere. Uh, it is... Uh, from frog yeah, like store is the name of the developer yeah it's kind of like lemmings like you build the road and they all follow it uh and it it is the one i saw was just a road on a void uh, okay, okay. Uh, i played humanity this year yeah yeah kind of humanity <laughs> vibes um great music. i was like i need to play God. I <laughs> oh. <laughs> did i tell you did i tell you that i don't think i mentioned it but you were like the music's so fucking terrible and i uh in the middle of that podcast i listened to a little bit i was like it was okay Maybe you just don't like that genre. <laughs> noise? <laughs> yeah, it was, a bit, it, it was a bit like a noise, like a vapor noise kind of thing from what I remember. I want this game to have like the beeping. like Euro, Euro yeah. beat. This, this game better have a Euro beat soundtrack. This game does look good. wild. Yeah, it looks I pretty crazy. Want it so when you tell the cars to go, it just plays gas, 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 gas. gas. <laughs> Step on the gas. I love the intro that's that song is do you like my car and it's just this guy <laughs> saying that it's so good god I love I love initial D I love that music um so yeah that's the wishlist spotlight for this week it it touts key feature realistic civil engineering somehow I don't think that's true <laughs> they couldn't uh, even spell it right <laughs> couldn't even spell it right <laughs> So go Why wish list a that. Lego person the size of a skyscraper <laughs> so on the side of the road. No, I just saw it's that realistic. picture too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's a 3D smoke shop. Go wish list it on Steam. Uh, it's coming soon. Go get in line for the 3D smoke shop. Uh, make your vape cool. Uh, oh. And that's going to be it for this week of Local Chat. Let me hit the outro button. Folks, it's so loud in my ears. I didn't turn it down. Folks, we will be back this weekend with some Roblox. 
So it picks a lot? No. No, I think, you know, I'll look it up real quick, but I believe this weekend is, could be the premiere of our brand new series called Fanfic Live. Oh, where yeah. Where we're going to play some roulette with common IPs that we're familiar with and then just write some fan fiction live because why oh, the fuck no. not? Oh, <laughs> no. Why not? Heck, yeah. That's good, uh, David and Ian, thank you so much for joining me this week, gentlemen. It was a pleasure to have you. How? David, where can people find you and your content? People can find me over with the folks at Save Data Team on YouTube, Twitch, social media. I don't know if you call it Twitter or X or whatever. I feel like I'm calling it porno when I say X. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.